Speaking of space, I think this is a good time to uh, transition over to finding uh, well water on Europa. Well, we, all were, we always knew it was there, well, we have for a long time, but I think there's some news on that front. We've got uh, William Sparks, an astronomer uh, with the Space Telescope Science Institute, as well as Jennifer Wiseman uh, with the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, the senior project scientist uh, at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. How are you guys doing today? We're doing Very good, great. thank you. It's great to have you here. Hey. So um, Hubble has collected some amazing images here, um, and I'm sure we're going to be showing them off. It's, it's a lot more than just pretty pictures. How, how exactly is Hubble helping us with uh, discovery right now? Well, let so me what chime we, in first, and I will then hand it over to uh, Dr. Sparks here. Um, we're very excited at NASA because Hubble is just continuing to pull in phenomenal new discoveries and results even 26 years into its mission. And this is an example of that. Uh, this research team led by William Sparks has used one of the Hubble spectrographs uh, to take an image that uh, is is indicative of potential water plumes uh, coming from the surface of Europa. This is the, the second time our research team has used Hubble and found preliminary evidence, it's not proof, but evidence that, that is building a case toward water, water plumes venting uh, through the ice. So uh, with, with that, I would hand wow. it over to Dr. Sparks to explain exactly what he's done. Uh, so what we did, um, as Jennifer said, we've observed Europa, uh, which uh, has a global saline ocean. And that makes it an extremely exciting place to observe in the solar system. Um, having an ocean means that it's the best place, the most likely place for hosting extant life uh, beyond the Earth. Uh, not only that, it's also a potential uh, site for a second origin of life beyond uh, the Earth. Uh, the trouble is, it's hidden, uh, the ocean, which has more water in it than Earth's oceans, is hidden between tens of kilometers of ice. We don't actually know how much uh, ice there is uh, covering the ocean, so that uh, suggests it's going to be very hard to explore the ocean. Uh, what we've been doing is looking to try and see if we can uh, find a shortcut, which is to find uh, cracks in the ice where water might be escaping from the ocean uh, into space. And we used Hubble to do that. Uh, as Hubble passes in front of Jupiter, which it does every orbit, we, we, have, the possibility, open, yeah. we have the possibility to see the outline uh, silhouettes of these water jets that could be uh, coming from the uh, ice surface of Europa. So and our results uh, showed some preliminary evidence that that is in fact uh, happening. So there must be enough pressure on the interior of Europa to force these water jets to, to tunnel through tens of kilometers of ice, as you say, to, uh, to shoot out into space, right? Yeah, that's an interesting question because uh, it's actually very difficult just to get water to spray out into space because ice is less dense than water and so it kind of happily sits on the top. However, there are uh, multiple ways in which it could happen. Uh, there's been uh, a couple of fairly detailed studies about uh, cryovolcanism from Europa. Uh, one probably slightly preferred method would be for an intermediate reservoir of water which sits within the ice between the ocean and the surface uh, and that's uh, fairly easy to pressurize because as the ice grows into the reservoir the water's got nowhere to go and uh, a crack in the ice can open up and, and, and spray the water out into space. There are other possibilities that could be uh, dissolved uh, volatiles within the water or this terrain above the water could be collapsing if there's a localized heat source. Uh, so th th there are many possibilities. Uh, we're just starting at the beginning uh, to see if there actually is uh, any evidence of these plumes. Now you mentioned a heat source and that was my next question. Uh, clearly the surface of Europa is covered with ice because it has no atmosphere, it's very cold where it is. Uh, how does the water become liquid deeper down? Where, where's the heat source there? 
Well, the current thinking is that it's uh, tidally generated uh, as Europa goes around Jupiter. It's in resonance with the other Galilean satellites, and uh, there's a significant amount of tidal heating. You see that in extreme uh, in Io, which uh, has sulfur volcanoes and is extremely hot, and it's basically mm -hmm. the, the same. What about radiation from Jupiter? Uh, wouldn't that affect the development of life even under the, under the icy surface? Uh, the radiation can't penetrate too far. Uh, it can be an advantage rather than a disadvantage because it's providing energy and chemicals on the surface. And if there's some sort of cycling mechanism with the ocean, uh, that can actually be used to advantage. Uh, I, I, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I'm sure the radiation depths are measured in more like meters than kilometers. Ah, okay. Now, Jennifer, um, obviously, I mean, the Hubble is <laughs> instrumental on the, to this discovery and to a whole lot more. What, it, what exactly is the f future of Hubble? Why is, why is this particular discovery so important for Hubble? Well, we're particularly pleased because Hubble is being used in, uh, I think, ingenious ways now. Uh, scientists such as, as Dr. Sparks here are finding interesting new techniques to use with the telescope uh, to make new discoveries. So uh, for solar system work, this is a cutting edge result. Uh, similarly, we recently looked at Jupiter with Hubble to see its auroral activity, the, the aurorae that are excited by the magnetic fields as they inter interact with charged particles. And we can do this with Hubble because Hubble can see in ultraviolet wavelengths of light. That's something that uh, no telescope on the ground can, can really do because of our atmosphere. And Hubble is really the only telescope, even in space, that can look at Europa and these features in such detail in ultraviolet light. So it's these kinds of cutting edge and unique things that we're trying to do with Hubble while we, while we still have Hubble. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, observations of Jupiter's aurora were, were quite uh, uh, timely because it happened at the same time that the Juno probe uh, reached Jupiter recently and began its orbit and its studies of Jupiter's magnetic field. So we're using Hubble in this way in collaboration with other missions as well to get the most new scientific information that we can uh, from all of these uh, different probes and observatories. Now Hubble is working very well, and we have the uh, the astronauts and, and all the engineers who support that program uh, much to thank for that because the astronauts have done several servicing missions on the Hubble telescope over its 26 year life. And the, the most recent servicing mission was in 2009. The astronauts did a terrific job putting in two brand new science instruments and repairing two other ones. One of those repaired instruments is the one that uh, Bill Sparks and his team have used for these results we're discussing today. It's not a camera, it's a spectrograph, the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph. So in some sense, it's both a camera and a spectrograph. It's, it, it takes the light and spreads it out into its constituent colors. A previous team used that to, to detect components of water vapor, uh, potentially, outside of Europa's ice. And now this team has used the same instrument, which was repaired by astronauts in their heroic repair in 2009, uh, to do more imaging type work, to look at Europa kind of in silhouette as it passed in front of Jupiter and seeing uh, sort of a silhouetted image of these potential plume-like structures uh, coming out. So we're excited about uh, what we're able to do with Hubble now, uh, with our new instruments and with these repaired instruments. And we think Hubble's working very well. We really think it's going to work for, for quite a few more years, uh, hopefully well into the 2020s, and overlapping with the uh, new James Webb Space Telescope that uh, we are anticipating to launch in 2018. That's going to be another large flagship observatory in space, but it will be more adept at infrared wavelengths of light. So that will be a nice complementary observatory to Hubble, which does some infrared, but mostly visible in, in ultra, ultraviolet wavelengths.